for this screencast, we're going to think about chemical equilibria. And this is a new unit, unit, unit 6, and this is our first day. And in this particular unit, we're going to focus on chemical equilibria. And specifically, we're going to move to not just looking at chemical equilibria, but we're actually going to start to look at equilibria um, in aqueous systems. And so these will be aqueous equilibria with a big importance on acid-base chemistry. But to start out with, we're going to look at chemical equilibria in general. So there are three key concepts we're going to cover. We're going to look at concentrations in reactions as we approach equilibrium. We're going to describe those concentrations by the so-called mass action expression. And then we're going to see how this is related to our equilibrium constant. So very important. Um, we're going to have a homework set, which is due. It's not going to be due Tuesday at 9 a.m. because we didn't have class. So instead, we're going to push it off till Thursday at 9 a.m. However, we will have two learning modules, learning module 13 and learning module 14, which will be on Canvas. And those will be due before our next class next Tuesday. We hope to have the exam grades uh, soon, but at the very latest, they will be posted by Saturday. Let's think about chemical equilibria. Now, we've actually dealt with this topic already because we looked at solubility equilibria. So let's consider the following reaction. We've got lead chloride as a solid going into solution and producing some lead ions and chloride ions. And we want to, in general, think about what this would look like over time and how the concentrations are going to change over time. So that's an area known as chemical kinetics. And we'll see there's a relationship between kinetics and equilibria. So let's imagine making a plot here where I started out and I had some time here. And over here I had my concentrations. And I was going to plot what happens if I start out with pure water and then I put the lead chloride in it. So if I start out with pure water, at the beginning of the reaction, if I think about the lead concentration, the lead ion concentration is going to start out here at zero because there isn't any of it. But as the salt begins to dissolve, I see that the concentration rises up and rises up, but eventually it, it, it saturates because... I get a saturated solution of lead chloride. And so this is my lead ion concentration. If on the same graph now, I'm going to look at the chloride ion concentration, then my chloride concentration I know is going to be different because it's got two of them. And so what will happen there is it will start out at zero as well, and it will go up, but it's got to go up by a, and have twice as much chloride. And so I see that there's this stoichiometric relationship between the two that the chloride is twice as much. Most importantly, if I'm looking at this, I can see that there is a place at which beyond this, now the concentrations are constant. And that's because I've gotten to saturation. And at saturation, I see that there's no more change in the concentrations of my reactants or products. And this is the point where we get to equilibrium. The concentrations have become constant. So let's try to interpret what's happening in this graph. Here now I have concentrations of some different species as a function of time, just like before. And I want you to look at it and see if you can figure out what's going on. So ideally you would pause the video now and then think about it. Um, I'm going to guess there's about one in a bazillion of you who will actually do that. Um, but if you'd like to, you can do that and then I'll start telling you what's going on. So let's imagine we're starting out here and we can think about what's happening at zero time. So at t equals zero here, the concentration of my NH3 is zero. But the concentration of N2 and the concentration of H2 is not. And so my reactants here must be nitrogen and hydrogen. 
And then as time goes on, those concentrations go down and the concentration of NH3 rises and that's because I'm making NH3. So I can balance this equation and I see that this is one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to make two moles of ammonia. And then at some point I get to this place where it's equilibrium and now the amounts of these gases is no longer changing and so actually this reaction is in equilibrium going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And what happens is the rate of generation of the products is the same as the rate of the back reaction to make reactants and so the net concentrations don't change. So it's not that the reaction has stopped, it's that it's now going forwards and backwards all at the same time and so my net concentrations don't change. Just like when I got to a saturated solution and the net concentrations didn't change. So here's another one. Um, what I want you to think about is kind of a microscopic view of what's happening in this reaction. Um, what are the reactants? What are the products? They're all in the gas phase. And then imagine making a drawing. So once again, um, I'd pause the video, see if you can make a little drawing, and then you can compare it to mine that's going to come up. So now I've got some little drawings here for you to consider. What do you think is the best choice here for my reaction? Which is the reactants? Which are the products? I've got CO, CO2, water, and hydrogen. And then I can look down at the bottom here and I have all kinds of drawings about what's happening um, and how things are changing as a function of time. So when I start out, I can see that I have a concentration of CO2 or CO and H2O that's non-zero and that's because these are my reactants. And then I'm forming CO2 and H2, and so these are my products. And so when I look at the initial reaction, I have only CO molecules and H2O molecules, and they each have some concentration. And that as time goes on, I begin to form some CO2 and some H2. And as the reaction proceeds further, I get more and more H2 and more and more CO2 until finally when I'm done, there's only a little bit of water and a little bit of CO left and mostly I have H2O or I have H2 and CO2. But importantly, at equilibrium, I, I still have a mixture. That is, I still have some reactants and some products but now the concentrations are no longer changing.